sharing the peace of Christ teaches us about our faith. So let's see what we can learn from what we just did. It looks like a simple everyday greeting. And many people think about sharing the peace as a disruption of worship. As people get up and walk around and, and talk to one another and greet each other, it does seem like it breaks into worship, and yet it is one of the oldest rituals we have. It comes to us from the first Easter, when Jesus appeared to his disciples, locked as they were in a room, hiding for their lives, so afraid, huddled together, and then Jesus appeared in their midst, and the first word he spoke after the resurrection was the word peace. Peace be with you, said Jesus. Luke's gospel then goes into a bit more detail about that greeting. But after that greeting, as you know, the disciples became a different body altogether. But the greeting was what motivated them. A ritual has been adopted by the church since that time when worshipers greet one another and say, peace be with you. It's a strange ritual, really, but really a very wonderful one. Peace. In passing the peace, we are, as theologians like to point out, living and demonstrating, living in and demonstrating the future God has in mind for us. We are acting out a revelation of God's future plan, and God's plan is one of peace. Peace among individuals, peace among families, peace among communities, peace among nations. Peace be with you. God's peace. And a few minutes ago, God was active, active in this church, in this place, and we revealed God's plan as he worked through us and demonstrated God's desire for us all. It's a wonderful vision, and actually, a rather amazing one. John Chrysostom, one of the ancient great philosophers of our tradition said, sharing the peace is the church's fuel of love. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. Fuel of love. Passing the peace, coming close to one another. It's such an amazing thing, really. Because in this church, thanks to COVID, we changed the way we pass the peace. We used to just greet one another with a handshake, but now we greet one another with open hands expressed toward each other. No weapon is in those hands. No knife to stab, no gun to shoot, nothing to hurt another person just open hands and the word peace, peace be with you. It's such an amazing thing. It comes, the, the origin I think dates back to Isaiah. In the early chapters of the book of Isaiah, we find that Isaiah caught 
God's vision for the future and described it this way. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. This morning I placed on our, on our worship table a figure taken from the United Nations garden. The nations of the world in 1945 and 46 had just suffered the worst war the world has ever seen. 20 million casualties at a minimum from that war as nation took up sword against nation. It was indiscriminate killing on a large scale. It was the worst the world has ever seen. And the nations came together in 1945 in San Francisco and they said, we can't have that happen again, ever. And the 56 nations came together and formed an international organization which has now become a huge organization of organizations. Each organization dedicated to peace in its own way. Some to feed the hungry, some to save the ill, some to uh, strengthen the political systems, some to strengthen communication among people and between nations, a whole plethora of organizations, an organization of organizations. We call it the United Nations. And in its garden, which stretches from 46th Street on 1st Avenue up to 50th, we find nations have given artistic gifts to the UN. And one of the nations gave the gift of a strong male figure beating a sword into a plowshare. And that's the figure that is here for you to examine if you wish after worship. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. It's rather amazing that the donor of this particular gift was the Soviet Union. And the gift was given when Mr. Khrushchev was the premier. He, he talked of himself as being an atheist who had nothing to do with Christianity. But he had studied for the priesthood at a certain time in his own boyhood. And he knew that verse. And that verse became the trademark of his nation. They shall beat swords into plowshares. Peace the peace of Christ be with you. Luke and John talk about a room in which fearful disciples had gathered after the crucifixion. Has anyone experienced worse violence than Jesus experienced on the cross? A violent world did its best to blot out the love of God and all it achieved <laughs> was a worldwide religion that has grown up to honor him and the peace that he brought. The first words from his mouth, peace, the peace of Christ, 
and you and I pass it on every week. The peace of Christ given to us. It's a great greeting, and other religions have picked it up as well. On the Jewish Sabbath, if you see your neighbors and friends heading to their synagogue for worship, call out to them the peace greeting, Shabbat Shalom, and they'll respond, Shabbat Shalom, the Sabbath peace. If you see your Muslim friends heading for their worship, call out to them the Muslim greeting, As Salaam, Alayakum, and they'll respond appropriately with similar language. As Salaam, Alayakum, peace be with you. Wonderful, wonderful. The effect, the religious effect, it looks quite simple. It looks easy and plain. It looks like it disturbs things, but it's just the, just the opposite. It can be seen as a, word, a world of peace happening before it happens right here. Amen.